I didn't see what he was yelling at. I didn't see the ambulance coming, but I remembered him yelling. That was the last thing I heard from him. There's more to life than what we think, and Landon Whitley has proven this. Beyond just our universe existing, heaven and hell are real. And this young boy got to experience the former not once but three times while the world thought he was dead. Each time he woke up from being completely unconscious and unresponsive, he had a terrifying message from Jesus himself. The message is so important that Landon isn't the only one who has come forward to narrate his death experience. Two other children and a young man have also claimed to have seen Jesus while the world thought they had died. What did Landon and the other testifiers reveal? And why did they need to die to see the unseen? Join us as we reveal the terrifying message Landon and the others were told to deliver to the world. The Boy Who Died Three Times Landon Whitley was only eight years old when he had the first of his three encounters with Jesus Christ. It all started one Sunday morning in 1997. Landon got into his parents' car, a Pontiac with his mom Julie, and dad Andy unaware of what would happen during their drive. They were on their way home from church, with Andy driving. Suddenly, something terrible happened. An ambulance crashed into their car at an intersection, hitting the driver's side where Andy was sitting. Unfortunately, Andy died right away, but the rescuers were quickly able to help Julie out of the car after the crash. Unaware there was a child in the vehicle, they didn't see Landon at first because the car was so damaged. Landon was sitting behind his dad and because the car crashed inwards, his body was hard to find. Julie remembers that the rescuers saw Landon's shoe first, and then they searched deeper and found him. When they pulled Landon out of the car, he wasn't breathing. The rescuers worked quickly to help him breathe again. Landon's journey was just beginning, and he would need all the help he could get. Landon was brought back to life and rushed to the hospital in a special helicopter called a life flight. He was in very bad shape and his body stopped working two more times that day. But the doctors and nurses were able to bring him back to life again both times. Even though they were able to save his life, the doctors told Julie that they didn't think Landon would survive. They said that if he did manage to live, his brain would be very damaged and he would be like a baby again. He wouldn't be able to walk, talk, or eat on his own. Julie was so desperate to have her son back that she would have accepted even that outcome, just to have him alive. Julie was feeling a lot of pain and sadness when she had to say goodbye to her husband at his funeral. She felt like God had abandoned her, and she didn't understand why this tragedy had happened. She was angry and hurt, and she asked God why he hadn't sent angels to protect them. But even in her sadness and anger, Julie was still praying to God with all her heart, begging him to please let Landon live. She was torn between her grief and her hope, and she was holding on to her faith as tightly as she could. Landon's head was very badly hurt in the accident, and he fell into a deep sleep called a coma. He was in the hospital, connected to many machines that helped him breathe and kept his heart beating. Julie, his mom, sat by his side, praying every day for him to wake up. But for two weeks, there was no sign of improvement. The doctors saw nothing that gave them hope. Julie kept praying, begging God to let Landon open his eyes again. Then, something unexpected happened. After two weeks, Landon's eyes opened. The doctors were shocked and happy, and Julie was overjoyed. But what was even more amazing was that Landon had no brain damage at all. He was going to be okay. But Julie knew she had to break the news of Andy's death to Landon. She was afraid to hurt him even more, but she knew she had to tell him the truth. Julie asked Landon if he knew where his dad was, and Landon replied that he had seen him in heaven. Landon remembered his time in heaven clearly, even years later. He said he saw his dad, and also some friends who had died before him. They were all standing together, not saying a word, but just being together. Landon also told his mom that he saw two other children in heaven, and Julie was shocked because she had never told Landon about the two miscarriages she had before he was born. Landon's story is a miracle, and it has stayed with him all these years. He remembers the accident, the coma, and his time in heaven where he saw loved ones who had passed away. Julie is grateful that her son is alive and well, 
and she knows that their faith and prayers helped them through the darkest time in their lives. Landon has a special memory from his time in heaven. He remembers seeing two children who he knew were his brothers and sisters, even though no one had ever told him about them. He says that in heaven, you just know who people are, and you know they belong to you. Landon had three different experiences in heaven, each time he died and came back to life. The third time was special because he met Jesus, who gave him a terrifying message and an important job to do. Jesus told Landon that he had to go back to earth and be a good Christian. He also gave Landon the message of his existence and told him to tell others about him. Landon says it was like getting a sneak peek of a movie, where you only see a few parts of the story, but he knew what he had to do. Many years later, in 2019, Landon and his mom Julie started sharing their story with others who were hurting and needed hope. They did this through a program called Grief Share, where people can share their stories and support each other. Julie says that she didn't understand why God didn't save her husband's life in 1997, but now she knows that angels were there, protecting them. She and Landon are living out God's plan for their lives, and they want to help others do the same. They don't want people to get stuck in their grief or anger, but to keep their faith and know that things will get better. Landon wants people to know that Jesus is real, heaven is real, and angels are real. He wants people to follow Jesus' teachings and the Bible and know that life will get better in the end. Landon's experiences in heaven have given him a unique perspective on life, and he wants to share that with others. He knows that Jesus truly exists, and that he has a plan for every life, and he wants everyone to know that too. Julie wrote a book titled, Faith Has Its Reasons, where she shares how God has used their difficult experience to bring others closer to him. She is grateful to see her son Landon sharing his story with others, telling them about Jesus and the heaven he experienced. Julie says it's a huge blessing to see Landon spreading the word about Jesus, and she knows it's because Landon has a personal connection with him. Landon has been to heaven and has seen Jesus, and that experience has given him a strong faith. Even though Landon's body was badly hurt in the accident, he is doing well today. He has many metal plates in his head, his nose was rebuilt from a piece of his skull, and he can't see out of one eye, but Landon is living a mostly normal life. He is dedicated to sharing his story and telling others about Jesus because he knows it's what Jesus has asked him to do. Landon is confident in his faith, and he wants everyone to know that Jesus is real, angels are real, and heaven is real. He is living proof of God's love and grace, and he wants to inspire others to have faith too. Landon isn't the only child who has claimed to have died and met Jesus before coming back to life. Zach and Mia's testimonies of seeing Jesus. Another named Zach Clements, a high school football player also found himself in a life-threatening situation that led him to meet Jesus. While running in PE class, he suddenly lost strength and fell to the ground. His heart had stopped beating, and he was technically dead for 20 minutes. Doctors later determined that he had suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. His mother was called to the scene, and Zach was airlifted to a children's hospital. Miraculously, just as the medical team was about to pronounce his time of death, they detected a pulse. Zach woke up days later, and his recovery has been nothing short of a miracle. He shared a personal story of dying, seeing Jesus, and coming back to life. He described the experience in clear detail, remembering what he saw and heard during those minutes without oxygen. Even with how serious the incident was, Zach's sense of humor, strength, and confidence to spread God's word with testimony have helped him through his ordeal. Besides Landon and Zach, Young Mia has also gotten to meet Jesus while being unresponsive in real life. Melissa Harris reported that in October 2020, she and her husband Mike enjoyed a cabin getaway and hiking with their kids in Ohio's Wayne National Forest. On their last day, Mike was carrying their daughter Mia down a path when tragedy struck. Melissa said she heard Mike scream Mia's baby in a way that made her know something awful had happened. Melissa grabbed Mia and held her in her arms, thinking she was gone. Mia felt lifeless to her like there was just nothing inside her. A large tree branch had snapped and fallen 60 feet to the ground, hitting Mia squarely on the head. Melissa said Mia showed no signs of life, and Mike prayed for her to wake up. 
After nearly a minute, Mia let out a scream that sounded awful and like it came from the depths of her soul. Melissa said it was the worst thing she had ever heard, but at the same time, it was a sign that Mia was alive. Melissa took Mia from Mike, and he went to search for cell service to call 911. It didn't end there. As they waited and prayed for help to arrive, Melissa realized the extent of Mia's injury. She said it wasn't a matter of if they would lose Mia, but when, given the severity of the injury. Melissa remembered touching Mia's head and feeling her skull was crushed. She cried out to God, asking him not to take her daughter, even if it meant she would leave this earth. Melissa said she believed in God and trusted him, knowing he had the power to change the situation. She remembered a story in the Bible about a woman who was healed by touching the hem of Jesus' robe. Melissa believed that if the power of Jesus was strong enough to heal the woman, then God could heal her daughter too. Melissa prayed over and over again, putting her hands on Mia and asking God to heal their daughter. She begged God to heal Mia multiple times. Meanwhile, the whole hospital scene was chaotic, with Mike running towards the trailhead, desperately searching for cell service. Melissa was crying and praying, holding Mia in her arms and begging God to save her daughter's life. Melissa remembered the sound of Mia's scream and how her daughter's lifeless body felt in her arms. She said it was a moment she would never forget, and it felt like an eternity as they waited for help to arrive. Melissa did not believe this could be happening to their family. She described the feeling of hopelessness and helplessness, but also the strength of her faith in God. Melissa also remembered the words of the Bible verse she had read that Jesus told someone her faith had healed her. Melissa believed that if Jesus had the power to heal the woman in the Bible, then he could heal Mia too. First responders finally arrived at the scene and rushed Mia to a nearby hospital. Mike followed in his car but stopped to call his church staff to pray. He wanted them to intercede on behalf of his daughter, pleading with God to perform a miracle. As Mike prayed, the word spread quickly through his church leadership, both locally and internationally. People around the world were praying for Mia, asking God to intervene and save her life. Mia was put into a medically induced coma and transported to Nationwide Children's Hospital. The doctors confirmed that she had suffered a traumatic brain injury, a fractured skull, and bleeding in and around the brain. Mike and Melissa were left with one main unanswered question. Would Mia wake up? The next morning, hospital staff brought Mia out of her coma. To everyone's surprise, she reached down and grabbed her diaper, saying she peed in her pull-up. For Mike, this was a sign that Mia was still with them and that she was going to be okay. Although she showed signs of paralysis on the left side of her body, Mia overcame any deficits within three days. Weeks later, she underwent a craniotomy to repair her skull and the tear in her brain's dura. Amazingly, she recovered all cognitive function and her personality remained intact. Mia's recovery was nothing short of miraculous. She was the same fun-loving, hilarious, and spirited child she had always been. It was as if nothing had ever happened to her. Months after the accident, Mia confessed to her dad that she had had a dream about Jesus, who had brought her home. Mike and Melissa were convinced that God had healed Mia and that his hand was on her life. Mike and Melissa were thankful for the chance to raise their daughter, and they knew that they owed it all to God. Mia made a full recovery and Mike and Melissa knew that they had experienced a miracle, and they were forever grateful. Atheist turned devout Christian. At the age of 19, Bobby Sarosa started working as a police officer in the state of New Jersey, and there, he saw the dark side of the world. There's a reason why he first mentioned this in the YouTube video where he told his story. You'll see why soon. Just keep watching. Bobby Sarosa's grandmother, who raised him, passed away when he was in his early 20s. She was one of nine sisters and was known for her strong work ethic despite being the poorest among them. Bobby was very resentful and angry with God for taking her away, as she was like a mother figure to him. At the age of 28, Bobby started his career in finance, and two years later, he left the police department after 12 years of service to focus on his business. It was there that he met his wife, with whom he has three children today. Although Bobby's wife was a devout Christian, 
he didn't share her beliefs. He would accompany her to church out of support, but he didn't genuinely connect with the faith. He struggled with resentment and anger towards God, especially after his grandfather passed away two years after his grandmother's death. For most of his life, Bobby didn't care about God or Jesus. He was too consumed by his own pain and resentment. But on March 23, 2020, Bobby experienced a life-changing incident. He went to bed feeling fine but woke up struggling to breathe as if someone was kicking him in the chest. Bobby remembered his training as a police officer and curled up in the fetal position to ease his breathing. He was unaware that his wife had called 911 and paramedics and police officers arrived at their home. One of the officers helped Bobby up, and that's the last thing he remembered. According to Bobby, he didn't want to get up, but the officer's outstretched hand and gentle words convinced him to take his hand and stand up. Bobby's wife filled in the gaps, revealing that he had turned blue and was unresponsive before the officer arrived. He asked if he should share both his and his wife's sides of the story, or just his own. He then described how he remembered being pulled up by someone and then feeling like he was floating in black space, unable to see or hear anything. According to Bobby's wife, he was placed on a stair chair and carried downstairs by paramedics, who instructed him not to grab the walls. Despite being in a spiritual realm, Bobby was coherent and spoke to his wife, telling her how tired he was and apologizing. Bobby's wife remembered that his eyes rolled back and he lost consciousness, he was rushed into an ambulance where CPR was performed. Bobby's heart stopped again, and he was dead for over 40 minutes before being stabilized and taken to the nearest hospital. Due to his critical condition, Bobby was taken to the nearest hospital, where he arrived clinically dead. His wife, a retired EMT, was only allowed to visit him for five minutes every hour due to hospital restrictions. Bobby later met the first responders who saved his life and learned that he had been clinically dead upon arrival at the hospital. Bobby Sorosa's wife was not allowed to stay with him in the hospital due to the lockdown in New Jersey, but she was able to visit him briefly, and during one of those visits, she fervently pleaded with him to come back to life. She remembers whispering in his ear that he shouldn't dare die on her. She mentioned she was too young to be a widow, so he had better get up and come back but despite her efforts, things didn't get better. Bobby's condition worsened, and he lost consciousness again. The medical staff informed Bobby's wife that she should say her goodbyes because they were unsure if he would survive, but their spiritual mentor intervened, advising her to speak life into him and not listen to the nurses. With renewed determination, Bobby's wife entered his hospital room, praying loudly and fervently. The medical staff was drawn to her prayers, and soon, a miraculous opening in the hospital's ICU became available. Bobby was rushed to the ICU, and his wife was unable to say goodbye before he was whisked away. But she credits her prayers and faith for the sudden turn of events that saved his life. While all this was happening in the physical world, Bobby describes a completely different experience in the spiritual realm. He felt himself floating in black space, unable to see or hear anything. Suddenly, a figure materialized from the right side of his foot, and Bobby was shocked to realize it was Jesus. Overcome with remorse, he started to apologize, convinced Jesus was real. Jesus floated around Bobby's feet before approaching him and lifting him in a gentle, wedding-like embrace. Bobby Sorosa describes a profound experience in the spiritual realm where he met a tall, olive-skinned figure with deep eyes and hair down to his shoulders. This being held Bobby very peacefully and lovingly, communicating without words. Bobby felt a deep connection, knowing he would be okay. The figure disappeared into darkness, leaving Bobby floating like a ghost. He then saw his friend Mark, a former police officer and client, who had passed away. Mark had often expressed concerns about his wife's well-being in case something happened to him. Bobby had promised to take care of her, and now... In the spiritual realm, he reassured Mark he had had his back. Mark was grateful, and they hugged, discussing their experiences on Earth. Bobby remembered their last conversation, where he had promised to take care of Mark's wife. Mark expressed thanks, and Bobby reiterated he had him. Their conversation was brief but meaningful, 
focusing on their shared experiences, not their deaths. It was a continuation of their friendship, with no mention of being dead or what they were doing in the spiritual realm. Bobby Sarosa woke up in the ICU nine days after his near-death experience, confused and disoriented. He had a full beard and no memory of what had happened. The ICU was chaotic, with doctors and patients rushing through the hallway. Bobby felt defenseless and scared, with no one explaining what had happened to him. The first person he saw was an Asian gentleman in full protective gear, who called him Robert, but didn't provide any answers. Bobby's instincts kicked in, and he became defensive, refusing to let anyone touch him. He assessed his body and realized he couldn't even move his left leg. As he watched TV, he saw news about COVID-19 and wondered if that's what he had, but he never had COVID-19, despite being tested multiple times. Bobby's mind raced, and he became paranoid, thinking the medical staff was trying to harm him or steal his organs. He refused to sleep or eat, afraid he would be poisoned. This continued for two and a half days, until one night, a nurse was by his bedside, and a black male in lime green scrubs walked in. Bobby was starting to piece together the routines and realized it was nighttime. The gentleman in lime green scrubs approached Bobby with kindness. Bobby had never seen anyone in the hospital wearing those colors before. The man reached out to touch Bobby's left wrist, and Bobby reacted instinctively, telling him to get away. Bobby demanded who he was, and the man calmly introduced himself, calling Bobby his son. Bobby was taken aback by the man's kind words and asked the man who he was again. The man then explained that he was a prayer warrior, sent by Bobby's wife, who had been praying for him outside the hospital every evening with their children. Bobby was skeptical at first, but the man's words resonated with him. Bobby's wife had mentioned the term prayer warrior before, and hearing it again brought him peace. He began to calm down and accepted the man's help. The man touched Bobby's wrist again, and this time, Bobby let him. The man thanked Bobby, and Bobby was relieved again. Two weeks later, Bobby was coherent and aware of his surroundings. He remembered dying five times in one day and the entire experience. He shared it with his wife, who was amazed by the story. She tried to find the mysterious man, Kendrick, but there was no record of him in the hospital. It wasn't until she realized that she had prayed for Jesus to appear in the flesh and calm Bobby down that she understood who Kendrick might be. Bobby learned a valuable lesson from his experience. God is real, and his presence can be felt in times of need. As he told a testimony in the video, Bobby Sarosa remembered reading a book by a neurologist who had a near-death experience and saw Jesus. This experience made Bobby realize that God is real and that we don't die, we pass on to another life. When we pass on, we lose five emotions, worry, doubt, fear, pain, and suffering. These emotions are gone, and we gain peace and an overwhelming love that cannot be decided. Bobby experienced this love when he crossed over and came back to life three weeks later. He told his wife that he didn't mind dying again because the love he experienced was so beautiful and pure. Bobby learned that there is nothing to fear about the unknown because he knows what the other side is like. He wants to share his experience with others to bring them peace and comfort. Bobby believes that everyone has their own journey and may not know where they are in their life. He wants to share his testimony with others so they can understand that there is peace, tranquility, and love on the other side. Bobby's experience changed his life. He was once aggressive and always kept himself busy. Bobby's experience also made him realize that we are born with only two fears, the fear of falling and the fear of loud noise. Everything else is influenced by our experiences and environment. When we cross over, we gain pure love, and it's like a blanket that wraps around us, giving us peace. Bobby Sarosa said that his life has changed dramatically since his encounter with Jesus. He now shares his testimony with everyone he meets, as he doesn't know what others may be going through. He is happy to have received positive feedback from people who have been inspired by his story. Bobby said that some people have shared their concerns about loved ones who are dying or have passed on, and he's been able to offer comfort and reassurance, 
even describing details about their loved ones that only they would know. Bobby then personally reached out to his biological mother, stepfather, and biological father, and now their relationships are respectful. He noted that forgiveness is for our own benefit, not others, and he's learned to prioritize relationships and make time for loved ones. His job is no longer the center of his universe. Lastly, Bobby said that he's come to understand that he's not in control of his life. Jesus and God are. When things don't go as planned, he trusts that another door will open, and life becomes less stressful when we surrender to a higher power. Bobby concluded that he's learned to shrug his shoulders when things don't go his way, trusting that it's all part of the plan. His experience has given him a new perspective on life, and he hopes to inspire others to find peace and trust in a higher power. Do you believe Jesus is real and God is alive? We would love to know in the comments. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your family and friends, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next updates. Also, click the next video on your screen to enjoy more exciting content.